Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. If you've watched my channel in the past year or two, you know that I like to use multi-trackers for my audio recording needs. I like the immediacy of them. I like the simplicity of it all. I will use an audio interface in a DAW, but I just like being able to plug something in really quick, turn the thing on, and I'm recording within 20 to 30 seconds. I don't have to be sitting at a computer. I don't have a mouse involved. It's just a very straightforward process where you can focus on the music, focus on the recording. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you also know that in the past year or two, I've been using almost exclusively the Zoom R20 and the Zoom R12 multi-track recorders for my recording needs. And with these two multi-trackers, they've got a lot of features, mostly this touch screen on each one of them that allows you to do some light DAW editing. But they've got a lot of good features in there. They're packed with effects that you could use. However, they do have some limitations compared to other multi-trackers. In the past, prior to getting these two devices, I had used things like handy recorders, like this Zoom H1N here, that with all handy recorders, they always feature some kind of usually serviceable built-in microphones that you can take advantage of. But for over a dec decade, I used my Zoom R8 multi-tracker. And one of the things that you could do with the R8 is pretty much just leave it in the middle of the room and take advantage of these two um, built-in condenser mics. So it's very easy to simply switch on the inputs to built-in condenser mics, adjust the gain for each one of them, hit the record button and you're off and running. You don't have to hook up any other mics. You've got these built-in condenser mics, which are great for that spur of the moment type of recording with acoustic instruments. You could just jam with the band, hash some ideas out and see what sort of like falls out as a good idea that you can then follow up on and try to do some more traditional recording with. So I was coming from the R8 and the R8 then is kind of led into the spiritual successor of the Zoom R12. And the R12, while it has that touch screen, it does not have the built-in condenser mics. The R20 as well, kind of coming from the older R16 and the R24 models that Zoom had, this thing also does not have condenser mics. And when I posted videos about the R20 or the R12, some of the comments that pop up frequently are, yeah, there's no condenser mics. To me, it's not a deal breaker. I don't think it's a deal breaker for a lot of people, but it got me thinking, is there any way that I could solve this problem where there's no built-in condenser mics for a cheap solution? Sure, you can always hook up a condenser mic to this thing, put a stand on your desk and try to record that way. But I don't know, the shortest XLR cord I have is probably six feet long. I got excess cord everywhere. I still have to find the condenser mic and get a stand for it that's going to work on a table or set up a bigger mic stand for it. It's just annoying and it doesn't have the simplicity and the immediacy of the built-in mics like the R8 does or a handy recorder does. So was there any way for me to kind of come up with a way to cheaply solve this problem with a DIY um, type of mechanism or something that I can come up with? I like to tinker with things. I like to build things. I like to watch Floyd Steinberg's channel on YouTube. He's always tinkering with things and building something out of a Raspberry Pi board. So in kind of the spirit of a Floyd Steinberg type of video, I was trying to come up with a mic, a condenser mic, a built-in mic that wouldn't have any kind of excess cords, would be very compact, be relatively cheap, would be able to run off of the phantom power from either the R12 or the R20 or any other kind of mixing board that would provide 48 volts of phantom power. And I wanted it to be compact, but still like an omnidirectional mic that I could just put the device down, hit record in the middle of a room, and it would pick up any of the audio that's around that we're, we're playing if I'm playing with some bandmates. So what I came up with is this. So in order to build this built-in condenser mic, you really need two components. One is going to be the microphone itself, and two is going to be an adapter to convert the TRS end of this into an XLR plug. But the first thing is the microphone itself. So I went shopping for uh, different types of microphones, looking around to see how I can workshop this thing and get it to interface with my R20 and my R12 or any kind of mixing board that supplies phantom power. So this is the Boya uh, BYP4A microphone. It is a condenser mic, it's omnidirectional, and it has a TRS end on this. So tip ring sleeve on the, the bottom of this. It's a, con a condenser mic, so it does require power from your mixing board or, or from your um, recording device in order to work, so it's not a dynamic mic. Um, additionally, the only other thing that was really in the box was this windscreen for it, but 
with this by itself, I'm not gonna be able to plug this into the R20 or the R12 and get it to work. Um, if I tried to put on a 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch adapter and then just plug this into like inputs one or two that way, it's not gonna work because I'm not gonna be able to deliver the phantom power to get this thing to operate. So the other component that I need is this Movo uh, FXLR Pro adapter. And what it has on this side is a 3.5 millimeter TRS female um, jack on this side. And then it also has a three pin male XLR end on this side. So the other part of this that makes it all work is that it has a phantom power converter inside. And that's critical because you could buy these things for pretty cheap where it'll just convert a 3.5 millimeter end into an XLR end, but that still won't work if you're delivering the phantom power to this type of microphone. And the reason for that is that if you get a more traditional condenser microphone, those typically will run off of 12 or really 48 volts of power. That's most of the condenser mics that you would buy out there are 48 volts of power. The R20, the R12, as well as most traditional mixing boards are going to be delivering 48 volts of phantom power. This thing just needs three to five volts of phantom power in order to work. So if you pump 48 volts into this thing, you're gonna get a lot of hum and a lot of distortion and noise with it. This is a converter that will convert the 48 volts of phantom power coming into it and being sent through and step it down to be three to five volts so that this way this microphone can work but you won't overload it with power. You won't get that additional um, line hum. The other thing about this that I liked, it had a bendable neck. So this way you can tilt it and you can point it in whatever direction that you want. Now it is an omnidirectional mic, a 360 degree omnidirectional mic. So it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, in my experience, it works a little bit better if you point whatever your sound source is, like a guitar or something straight at the mic. But you simply plug this thing into this and now you nice you have a nice compact microphone unit that you can now plug into an XLR input that's supplying 48 volts of phantom power. This thing will convert it, step it down to three to five volts so that this mic can work. So what I thought I would do was I'll plug this into my R20 multi-track recorder. I'll turn it on the phantom power and then I'll compare how this microphone performs next to the built-in condenser mics of my R8 unit as well as my HN1 handy recorder. So I'll play those back to back. I'll just play a couple chords really quick on a, um, an acoustic guitar. I have an Ovation acoustic guitar. The Ovation will not be plugged in. I'll just play it acoustically. So I'm not going to add any compression. There will be no effects. So it will sound probably a little bit raw. And I'll do my best in post to just kind of balance those out, even though this will be a mono signal and the HN1 and the R8 will be um, stereo signal. So I'll do my best to kind of normalize the volume a little bit, but you will hopefully be able to appreciate the differences between this mic and the other mics, and we'll see how well it performs.
so there you heard the comparisons between this microphone plugged into the R20 and how it stacks up against the built-in condenser mics in the H1N and the R8. Now, you know, I don't think it's the best microphone in the world, but I still think it's serviceable, especially if you are looking for something that's compact and you could put this thing into any of your XLR inputs. If you wanted to, I guess you could get two of them and create a stereo pair for yourself, put this on a table in the middle of the room and have a jam session with your bandmates, work out ideas, and it should be able to capture that fairly well, um, especially if you start to put on some compression and some effects, you could tighten up the sound and the signal a little bit better. Now the mic itself, I got this on Amazon. I'll add in some um, information in the description below. So I got this uh, Boya microphone. Um, this is, now they sell this in a couple different configurations. You do wanna, I think, I recommend you get this one in the TRS end on this side. You can also get it with like, you know, USB-C or TRRS for smartphones, but this will work for more like for DSLR or mirrorless cameras. Um, I got this, this was, I think it was $10, but then there was one of those things where you click it and you add on a 20% off coupon. So it was, I think, eight US dollars. The um, Movo XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter that I have here that has that phantom step down um, converter inside, this was $12 on Amazon. So the prices on these things change a little bit, a couple dollars here or there, but when you add it up together, this was 20 or $21 for me total with you know free Amazon Prime two-day shipping. Um, and it works fairly well. So you can use any of the different types of condenser microphones. I think largely if you, you get them with a TRS connection, um, the ones that are designed to mostly work for DSLR or mirrorless type camera. So any of them in theory should work. Get the ones that have like a bendable neck. I think so this way you can direct and point the microphone a little bit, pick up the signal a little bit stronger, a little bit clearer, um, and give yourself that flexible freedom that comes with having a quote unquote built-in mic. So if you miss a built-in mic, leave a comment in the section below. Um, let me know what you think about the quality of this mic versus the R8 or the H1N and how it performs potentially against other mics that you've uh, tested out. And if you have any interest in getting a built-in mic or making a built-in mic for yourself for a mixing board or for a unit like an R20 or an R12 for about $20 for yourself. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.